please be seated. Are you ready to hear the word of God being preached? Amen. Well, I'm excited to open the Bible with you this morning. Today we're going to make it pretty simple. We're just going to stick to one chapter. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11. We're going to look at this great chapter. Uh, you can do so many sermons on Hebrews 11. We're going to take a different take on it. Amen? What a beautiful day. The sun. I mean, it's incredible. So happy to be with you guys. Love you guys so much. Um, I mean, it's incredible to be back home in L.A. Amen? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to try to read a whole my Bible at the same time here. Uh, look in verse 1. It says, now faith is, a, is confidence in what we hope for and the unassurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. Now let's jump down to verse 6. And it says this. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to, to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. See, the Bible says that faith is not only do you need to believe to have faith, but you need to believe that if you seek him, he rewards you. Faith is not simply intellectual belief. Faith is not simply saying, okay, I, I trust in it. No. Faith is believing and then seeking God so he can reward you. The Bible says that if you believe, then he will reward you. So faith implies being rewarded if you seek him with all your heart. Amen? The title of today's sermon is, When God Rewards You. When does God reward you? Do you want to be rewarded? I like that word. Recompensa in Spanish, right? Recompensa. When does God reward you? Let's look at the heroes of the faith here, and we're going to look at some examples about when God rewards you. It's going to be very simple. Let's go to here in chapter 11. When does God reward you? Let's, let's look in verse 4. It says, By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offering. And by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he's dead. Abel brought a better offering by faith. Remember Genesis 4, right? In Genesis 4, both Cain and Abel brought an offering to the Lord. And what was the difference between the offering? The difference is that Abel gave his best. Cain simply gave an offering. And God looked with favor on Abel and his offering, and not on Cain. When does God reward you? Well, point number one, God rewards you when you give your best voluntarily. See, Abel didn't have the Bible. It was being written, right? It was his life. Abel just had a relationship with God. And he intuitively gave his best to God. When does God reward you? When you give your best to God voluntarily. No one has to force you. You volunteer. 
Just like Isaiah chapter 6, here am I, send me. When you give your best voluntarily, God will reward you. And that's exactly what the City of Angels is doing and all the world sector giving their special contributions. You give your best and God will reward you. Now, how will we reward you? Well, uh, I mean, depends. God is God, right? We're not God. Uh, he can reward you with, with spiritual blessings. He can reward you with peace. Everyone's suffering from anxiety, depression, sadness. But with God, you can have peace. In the midst of this crazy world, you can have peace. And God can reward you. I know uh, I, I, I try to give God my best. Amen? At times, we know we fluctuate. But overall, let's give God our best voluntarily. Amen? One of the things that uh, God has given me, this unworthy servant, is that both my parents, at over 80 years old, were baptized in Jesus Christ. Like, that's the, I mean, I can die and go to heaven after that, amen? I mean, it, who gets that? Who, who gets to baptize their parents at over 80 years old? Almost no one. And God has given this unworthy servant, this sinner, that gift. Because... I don't know why God did it, but I'm so grateful he did. Because my parents were very close for 23 years as a Christian. 24 years as a Christian back then. I want to encourage you. Give your best. And God will reward you. He will reward you in ways you don't know. But he will reward you in different ways. Let's keep reading. You guys excited here? Point number two. Point number two, let's go to verse five. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. The Bible says in Genesis that Enoch walked with God. Isn't that cool? I mean, if they say something about my life, of your life, can you imagine people, someone in heaven saying, okay, David walked with God. Raul walked with God. That's great. That's a great uh, reward right there. See, God was so fired up with Enoch's relationship with him that God said, you know what? I'm not even going to wait for you to die. I'm just going to take you up here so you can be with me right now in heaven. Amen? I mean, that's how much Enoch loved God. God was so excited. He was like, you know what? I'm not going to wait for this man to die. I'm going to take him straight to heaven in a chariot. When does God reward you? Point number two, when you walk with God. God rewards you when you walk with him. And walking with God is a personal thing. It's something no one sees but your God. See, we can get excited about many things in the church, and we should, amen? We should be excited in the church. This is a place to get excited. I remember going to soccer games in Latin America. Man, that's, that's crazy. There's a team in, um, in Argentina called uh, Boca Juniors. The Latins know that, amen? And, I mean, you go to the stadium... Uh, it's two 45-minute halves, right, and 15 minutes break, and the whole time they're standing singing. If you don't sing, they give you a little hit. Hey, canta, che, canta. They, 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 they hit you in the back of the head. You need to sing the whole time standing. That's how exciting, excited they are for soccer, which means nothing. How much excited should we be for Jesus Christ? But you need to walk with God. You need to walk with God. You can be excited and not walk with God. You can be in a fired up church and not walk with God. But the, your walk with God is personal. It's what you need to have in your heart. Some tips I can give you. Number, number one, just try to have a goal in your prayer life. What do you mean a goal? Have a goal. Maybe you have a list. Maybe you have a time limit. 
if you don't have a goal, you don't hit anything. Have a goal in your prayer life. In your Bible study, try to read the Bible every single year. Uh, every single year. Read in a different translation. We, the NIV, it's awesome. Amen? What a great translation. But there's so many other translations you can read the Bible in. I mean, I've read the Bible at least in 10 different translations in English. Uh, about five in Spanish and just one in Portuguese. Amen? <laughs> Portuguese is complicated. But uh, at least I read it one time. Uh, about, I read the Bible in Portuguese about five times, but just in one translation. Reading different translations, they give you a different feel for the scripture. And, but the most important thing, guys, if you want God to bless you, walk with him. Amen? Point number three. Let's go there. When does God reward you? Back, back here in uh, Hebrews 11. I have my notes right here, amen. In verse 7, it says, By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save, him, to save his family. By faith he, con he condemned the world and became heir to the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. You guys know the story of Noah, right? What did Noah do? He built the ark. He built the ark without, because he feared God. He had a holy fear of God. He knew that the flood was coming. But nothing like that had ever happened in the planet. So he had a holy fear of God. When does God reward you? God rewards you when you fear the Lord. God rewards you when you fear the Lord. Fearing God is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. You see, in our, in our, in our um, sinful nature or humanistic thinking, we think, well, I don't need to fear anything. I am my own man. I don't fear anything. I don't fear anything. You know what? You better fear God. He can take you out in a second. He doesn't want to take you out, but maybe he does if you're sinful. I mean, God, you, you don't know the mind of God. You better fear the Lord. Fearing the Lord is awesome. He takes away all your other fears. You, we fear everything but the Lord. We should change it around and only fear the Lord and not fear anything in our lives. Fear God. Fearing God is uh, it's awesome. It's, it's a respect. It's an honor. It's a relationship of respect. I have an example for you. For example, I have a great relationship with electricity. I do. I have a great relationship. I, I use electricity every day, right? So do you, right? Uh, but I'm not going to put my tongue in the electric socket. What would happen if I did that? I get electrocuted, right? And I look like a fool in the process, right? Evangelist died, put his tongue in the electric socket. Can you imagine that? We're not going to do that. I have a great relationship with fire. I mean, I don't play with fire. I don't put my hand in the stove, right? Although some of you may, may try to, you know, some kids do. But the whole point is that fearing God is a great, it's a relationship of love and respect. You're not like, oh, God is going to kill me. He's going to kill me. No, no, you respect God. He loves you. He cares for you, but don't mess with him. He's more powerful than you are. Amen? Fear the Lord, and God will reward you. Let's keep going. Point number four. Look at verse eight. Point number four. When does God reward you? Verse eight. It says... By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land. Like a stranger in a foreign country, he lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. God called Abraham to go. He called him to go, and he went. 
But where did he go? He went to Canaan. He had never lived in Canaan. Can you imagine going to a mission field and never had been there before? That's insane. And that's exactly what God called Abraham to do. And that's exactly what he calls you to do. Many of you have gone and planted churches and never been there before in that city, right? God calls you by faith to do things so you can trust him. When does God reward you? He rewards you when you give God the control. Point number four. God rewards you when you give him the control. You're no longer in control. God is in control. I remember when we were planting the church in Bogota, Colombia. And, you know, we're going to plant it. And we sent Tulio and Baitza. They had never been there before. They did not even speak the language. But they went, amen? And God blessed the church. The church is doing awesome. I remember when we were going to plant, we were going to plant the church in Lima, Peru. And, and we told Danilo and Carol, hey, you got to go. God is calling you to go. And they, and they went. And they planted it. But they had never been there before. They took their team there. And they learned the language as they were there. Amen. And God blesses you because God blesses you when you give him the control. Do not try to control your life. Let God control your life. And if he controls it, he will reward you. You will be rewarded, yes, ultimately in heaven. But you will be rewarded even in this life. So point number four, when does God reward you? When you give God the control. You want one more point, two more points, and let's go. <laughs> Amen. Two more points. Point number five, look in verse 11. When does God reward you? Verse 11. Let me find it here. It's so bright, I don't even need my glasses to read. It ain't gross. So bright. Uh, by faith, you know. God healed me temporarily right here. Uh, verse 11. It says, And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children, because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. He was talking about Sarah. Sarah believed God. Sarah believed the promises, and, and she was blessed with a child at 90 years old, which is totally impossible. Impossible. What is point number five? When does God reward you? He rewards you when you trust in his promises. When you trust in God's promises, God will reward you. God promised Abraham and he promised Sarah they would have a son in their old age, which was impossible. But nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is even hard for God. Nothing takes even effort for God. God can do anything whenever he wants, however he wants, and he has all control and all power in this world, amen? God can do anything. The impossible became possible because Sarah trusted in the promises. And so did Abraham. Look in verse 17. It says, by faith Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead so that, you know, Manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. I love this passage. God tested him. And God had promised Abraham beforehand that your descendants would be as numerous as the sand of the seashore. He promised him that, right? But then God says, you know what? You got to kill your son. So Abraham, in his human logic, thought, well, God never lies. His promises always become true. So I'm going to kill him, 
and God is going to resurrect him right there and there. That's exactly what he thought. But God didn't even go that far with him. Amen? See, what is the point number five? When does God reward you? When you trust in his promises. There's so many promises in the Bible. All we need to do is trust in them. But we doubt them sometimes, don't we not? We get fearful. We, we become gun shy. We, we, we don't really sometimes believe that God has our best interests in mind. But he does. He's just testing you. He's testing you so that you believe in his promises. And our final point to conclude here. In point number six, when does God reward you? Look in verse 13. I love this. It says, all these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country. They're not looking for a country of their own. If they had been, um, if, they ha if they were thinking of a country they, ha they, they had left, they would have the opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country. A heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. When does God reward you? Point number six. When your reward is in heaven. The patriarchs were looking for a better country. They, they were looking for the city of God. They were looking for one day being in God with heaven. Why do we do what we do? Why do we give special contribution? Why am I so crazy to have been in the mission field for 20 years and counting? Amen? Because we have a reward. Your reward is not material blessings in this world. Your reward is not living a long life. Your reward is not uh, having a great retirement. Your reward is not being famous. Your reward is to be with God one day in heaven. I want to encourage you. That needs to be your reward. That needs to be your hearts. That we want to be with God in heaven. And the reward is heaven. And the reward is coming. And that's why we look forward to it. That's why we sacrifice. That's why we give. That's why we evangelize. That's why we do whatever it takes so that God can be glorified in this world. I want to encourage you with this simple passage, this chapter 11 of Hebrews, the hall of faith. It's incredible. Faith is not simply believing that he exists, but it's believing that he will reward you. Do you want to be rewarded this afternoon? Do you want to be rewarded? I know you do. Follow these six points and you will be rewarded. And to God be all the glory. Amen.